the ESPN W Summit. It's returning in person, gathering today in New York City. It's a day long conversation and reflection of the year in women's sports. Now, this event will gather a distinctive group of leaders and change makers in the intersection of sports, business, as well as entertainment. The summit will include discussions like the growth of women's sports and the importance of black women in sports media. Women's sports is more popular than it's ever been. The ratings for the recent NCAA Women's Basketball Final Four, Final Four, it averaged nearly 5 million viewers, and that's up 18% from last year. The event will stream live across multiple sites, including the ESPN app, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. The ESPN W Summit will run until 7 tonight. Third graders in an elementary school in Arizona are getting full rides to college. Yes, it's all thanks to a nonprofit called the Rose Togsy Foundation. They help students who can't afford college make their dreams a reality. The foundation says the third graders' college tuition books and room and board will be covered free of charge, and they can attend a college in or outside of the state. Parents at Bernard Black Elementary School thought they were attending a normal assembly when they were told the news. The school is named after the Reverend Dr. Bernard Black, a pioneer in education and a World War II veteran. And a black tech CEO is turning his employees into millionaires. Entrepreneur Bill Sprill sold his startup global data company for an undisclosed amount. But before he sold the company, he made sure his employees had enough equity in the company to see significant payouts from the deal. Now, because of that, 25 of his employees are now millionaires. Sprill plans to step down as a CEO and focus on boosting minority talent in tech. Roughly 20 years ago, Krista Bourne was a mailroom clerk for Verizon, and today she is the first black COO for the company. She started back in 1999, and since then, she's climbed up the ranks. She's helped more than 100 million customers and has delivered more than $88 billion in annual revenue. Bourne says that she knows how rare it is to be in her role, but she believes that more black women are capable and should be given opportunities like hers. According to reports, less than 5% of chief operating officers officers are black females running track since the age of six. I love this story here. They say age is just a number and this may be proof. A 100 year old World War II veteran has smashed a 100 meter record. Lester Wright brought to thousands to their feet when he broke the record for his age group in the men's 100 meter at the Penn Relays in Philadelphia. Wright crossed the line at 26 minutes and 34 seconds, surpassing the previous record set in 2015. The New Jersey native and sprinter hasn't competed in a race in three years because he was recovering from an illness Wright says he's always had a passion for running. At 77 years old, he won the 75 and over 100 meter dash at the Penn Relays. Black Public Media is awarding $255,000 to three different creative teams who completed, competed at its Pitch Black Forum. The annual forum is the largest pitching competition for black independent filmmakers and creative technologists in the U.S. Now, it's designed to advance black content and a draw in who's a who of public television and commercial distributors and funders. So the three winners included a documentary called Wednesday in Mississippi. That's a film that received $150,000, and it examines the challenges and the triumphs women faced during the civil rights movement. Another film, 40 Acres, it received $75,000. Now, that film, it explored the relationship between black farmers and their land. Rabiola Open Skies, a location-based experience that invited pedestrians to fly virtual kites on nearby buildings, use their cell phones, and it received $25,000. Congratulations. I want to say this real quick. Lester Wright ran that in 26.34 seconds, not in minutes. So I just want to clarify that. Got to do that for the track world. Yeah. All right, a program in Compton, California is training black and brown youth how to fly. Robin Peck, grave a pilot and entrepreneur who was inspired by the Tuskegee men, Airmen, stated the youth outreach program. Now, he started this program, which exposes black youth to aviation careers. Each of the planes in his fleet is dedicated and named after one of the historical pilots to earn flight time. The students must finish their homework, help each other with their studies, and do chores around the airport, such as wash airplanes and sweep the hangar. The program is $500,000 per year and funded by grants, donations, and the goodwill of others. Here to tell us about the program and its young flowers is my longtime friend, Robin Petgrave. How you doing? Welcome to the show. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm fine. It's been a long time. You know, we kept saying we're going to connect. It's so good to be here. And it's so funny, like the, your audience, I don't know if they know, but you knew me before. You were 
doing those positive vibration visits with me when I used to fly the helicopters and land at a school. Yeah. And you saw the same reactions I saw when I got out of the helicopter and the kids were looking at me like, when's the pilot going to get out? And when they saw that I was a pilot, they yeah. couldn't believe it. Like, they just seen a unicorn, right? Yeah. They're like, uh, black people can fly? I'm like, yeah, and I own the company and the helicopters and the airplanes and all those guys work for me. Flex you remember on. that same reaction? You uh -huh. know? Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely did. So what inspired you to start this program? Well, I mean, that was a major part of it. And then we had an airfare, and I went to it, and I met some Tuskegee Airmen. And they told me about all the struggles they had gone through. And so I thought, well, next time I do a positive vibration flying, you got to come with me because without your sacrifice and your triumph, mm -hmm. I would never even make this, right? And so you saw those reactions from those kids and listening to the Tuskegee Airmen about wanting to start a youth program, that's what motivated me. I just said, you know what? Um, this this is a calling. This needs to be done. I need to, to develop a sustainable program where kids that look like us mm -hmm. can have uh, an on-ramp into the whole tech field, and the, all the STEM, you know, um, being a pilot, being an engineer, being a doctor, all of those fields that have been basically denied to um, people of uh, color. Mm -hmm. uh, We've made it uh, a, a way where kids can come. I mean, before COVID hit, we had over yeah. 6,000 kids enrolled in the program. Wow. We've had eight kids set 15 aviation world records. Um, uh, one of the little girls that flew one of our airplanes, Kim, uh, Kimberly Anyadike, mm -hmm. from Compton to Newport News, Virginia, and back to Compton, She next year she's graduating from medical school as a neurosurgeon. Love so. It. The kids that have gone through the program have just been so successful. It, you know, it's like what we were talking about when I was first putting this thing together. Right. Uh, if you expose kids to all of this technology and you surround them with myself and a bunch of people that don't look at the glass as half empty, mm -hmm. we don't see why you can't do something. You need to just go and do it. Gotcha. And these kids really believe us. And now they're airline captains. They're making $200,000 a year. They're under 30 years old. Uh, I mean, it's pretty amazing to see what the kids have been able to do yeah. just by being given this little, uh, little leg up that people not of color get all over the country. Well, let me it's ask you this, Robert. I, I, I hate to interrupt. I know we don't have a lot of time, but I have to ask you this. So how's the reception been? I mean, you think about that, what they've achieved as kids and their parents seeing this happen and you being a part of it. What's that reception like? You know what the reception is? Um, you do something for someone, you're mm -hmm. not sure if you get it. And then when they show you that they get it, it's so rewarding. The kids have put together their nonprofit, they call it Fly Compton, to do the exact same thing for the next generation that I did for them because they see that it works. Mm -hmm. And Fly Compton rents space at the museum and now they're running the youth program. So now it's sustainable. And the Tuskegee Airman, Big O, Otis Kali, when he saw how this is gonna continue long, him and myself are gone, uh, he wept, he crept, you know, he cried and uh, the, I mean, I feel like mission accomplished. Yeah. It's a sustainable program where kids, by their accomplishments, their families, their loved ones, are so appreciative because things could have gone another direction. You know I what agree I mean? with that 100%. Uh, before we go, I got to say thank you. There was a time where you flew my family, went to Palm Springs and hung out, and you let me fly the helicopter for a little while. It was So I, I, I marked it off my bucket list. So I thank you for allowing me to experience that. Well, you did great, man. I, you know... You would have been an incredible pilot, but you're an even better personality Thank you. for the community because you and, and your partners have inspired people for years, decades. You've just been doing People talk about doing it. You've been doing it. Well, hey, you're an inspiration to me. I'm trying to keep up with you, and you continue to do it, man, from the city of Compton to around the world. Thank you for joining us. You have to come back again, or maybe we can do a live broadcast from your hangar. We can do that, all right? Absolutely. I, I welcome that. Robin Pegraff. Thank you, man. Take care. Right. I mean, take care.